Well, Bandit wanted to sit on my lap again, so here we are. Hi, my name is Jake, and as I introduced Bandit, how you doing, buddy? Got a little bit of drool on your chin there. Because he doesn't have any teeth. Just has his fangs, and then he's got big molars. <laughs> so he drools a bit. Funny dog. Give me five. Right on. Good boy. Go play. Today, we're going to look at the Eye of Ra. This is a knife by Best Tech. I believe it's a 2020 knife. If not, it came out late 2019. And we've got sort of the symbol for the Eye of Ra, which is uh, from Egyptian, ancient Egyptian uh, mythology. We've got a straight back blade or a standard blade, D2 steel like Best Tech likes to do, especially on their budget knives. If you're interested in looking at a smaller, light flipper knife, stick around. The full review is coming right now. All right, let's get into taking a good look at this knife. Um, I quite like it, how it looks. We've got a straight back on the blade, a nice swedge that goes across there, a nice saber grind, which is a flat grind that doesn't come up to the spine. The flat side sections there on the Ricasso here and coming up, that's stone washed. Gives a nice little contrast to the uh, to the blade. Let's see if I can show that off there. The Best Tech logo, nice and small there, not too terribly big. And then on this side, all it says is D2 for D2 steel. A tip that is very good for you know precise work or for piercing work. The blade stays, you know, full thickness right up to there, and then it slowly starts tapering. And then the last little bit is a more quick little taper. It's not a super weak tip, uh, although it looks like it might be, but it's it's not. It's not a super robust tip either. It's very sharp. This is one of the sharpest uh, knives that I've tested, you know, since I started keeping records of the uh, sharpness behind the sharpness of the edge from the factory. Very very sharp. Uh, the grind isn't totally even. Um, I'll, actually, from this angle, I've got a picture. This side here, uh, you might even be able to see it, how much of the grind you can see, how deep it goes before it ends. And then on this side, it's uh, significantly shorter. And uh, so this side's been ground more off than this side, so the cutting edge isn't centered at the tip. It seems to be fairly well centered for most of the edge, just not right at the tip. Of course, that can be remedied. Uh, you know, the next time I have to sharpen it, that will probably be remedied fairly well. So decent. I like the belly on it. Lots of belly on this knife. It's a great knife for cutting. It performed very well in my tests. Um, and, you know, with that tip, all kinds of work, you know, you can do piercing of leather, you know, the tip's plenty strong enough for that, and fairly, fairly thick back there. You've got a bit of a chamfer on the edge here, and then there's that jimping, and it seems to have been polished quite a lot, because the jimping is fairly smooth. It doesn't just grab your thumb and hold it there. Um, I wish it was a little more aggressive than it is, actually, but it's not terrible. We've got a very nice sharpener choil here. Uh, the plunge is fairly slow, but it ends uh, before the edge begins, so that's nicely done. And you can see the chamfer here on what is the flipper tab when it's closed. It's well well made. It's not a forward choil though for your finger like this. Nope. If you grab that hard and quickly, you're going to end up slicing into your finger uh, in this sort of region when you grab it like that. Should they have made it with a forward choil? No, I don't think so. I don't think it really needs it. But if you'd want that, it's not that hard to do. Uh, if you've got some kind of Dremel tool or something, um, you know, or even you know a drill press or even a drill uh, with some little stone and stuff, you can bring this back a little ways if you want to to get your finger back there without doing too big of a modification. I don't think I would do it on this one because it's very comfortable in hand. Before we talk about how comfortable that is, let's talk about this piece of steel sticking out here, the flipper tab. It's got a little bit of jimping on there. 
And again, it's smooth, but it's very easy to get behind there to do the uh, light switch method, pulling back, causing it to fly open. And that's because the detent is done very well on this. And pushing down and just slightly back, there's my notes, that works very well as well. It's built very well. Uh, before we go on with more of the pivot, let's take a look at the handle here. It's a fairly straight back, and then there's a change of angle there, and it comes back, and another change of angle here. It uh, helps that knife to fit quite comfortably in hand. It sort of fills in with those contours instead of, you know, a straight back kind of handle would do. Fits in there very well, and you grab the knife, and it's a very solid grip, a very comfortable grip. I was able to work with this thing for extended time, doing lots of work, and it didn't get very hot in the hand at all. And that's largely because there's no little sharp edges. You know, there, this is chamfered. You can see that kind of a light, the light's bouncing off that right now. That edge is chamfered and it's rounded off along the spine all the way around. It's very well made that way. Very, very comfortable. Uh, reverse grip, you know, with this angle here, the thumb just wants to rest on that very well. Very comfortable. A reverse pull grip, not so much. You'd have to get your thumb out of the way. You can see that it's uh, the G10 is pulled away from the liners, so the liners are exposed. They're not just visible, but they're exposed all the way around. Uh, on the black one, it's blue anodization, which is quite nice. Uh, the other colors have different kinds of anodization uh, on there. It actually looks quite sharp. And of course, you know, if you have that eye of raw kind of symbol there in the G10, it comes back. You can see a little bit. Let's see if I can get a good angle here with the, the light. It comes back all the way up to the pivot pin here and then back here all the way up to this screw. They've made sure they've aligned all these things very well. That's a nice little touch that helps it to, you know, just look a little bit better. It's got button screws, but they're inset, so you can just feel them over here. They're not, you know, sticking out very far or anything. Small G10 backspacer. And they did little things like this liner here is rounded on both the outside and the inside, and then just where it comes up to the liners, they stop rounding it off, so it's got a nice tight fit for that backspacer. That's a good touch. They did a great job with that. I like that quite a lot. It's a good looking knife, a good design. Um, let's talk about the pivot now. The pivot's made very well. You've got uh, ceramic ball bearings in a bronze or brass cage. Uh, small ball bearings, which helps as well to keep the action very smooth. You know, it just takes a little bit of a shake and it wants to shut. Very well done. The detent is just great. Um, see that? It just wants to stay closed once it gets there. And it doesn't open up easily when you don't want it to. You can shake it, do that sudden, that shake and then suddenly stop and the blade does not start to come out. So that's very well done. Well, well made. Uh, what it's, strangely, the uh, detent ball is visible when you just look at the uh, knife from this, a little slight angle. Just look straight down, you can see the detent ball. Not a problem with that. Uh, lockup is exactly where I want a brand new knife to be. Maybe a very tiny bit later than perfect, but very, very well done. It's exposed a little bit. As you can see, there's on this side, you can see that bump back on this side. It doesn't exist, it's just nice and smooth. And that means it's easy to get your thumb in there to want to close the knife, to, to unlock it. That works very well. And uh, very functional with either hand, works just fine. And uh, there's no sharp edges to catch or anything on there. I didn't catch, pinch my skin between the liner and the G10 or anything, just well made. And uh, it's very smooth action. I really like how this works. It's a good knife. I'll tell you the weight later on. This is a nice light knife for its size. 
Um, oh, I didn't talk about the paracord, the lanyard hole. You can fit 550 paracord in there very easily. You can probably fit 1100 paracord in there. No problem at all if you like to carry lanyards on your knives. Pocket clip. There we go. It's time for the pocket clip. This pocket clip, because of this um, milling out skeletonizing, major skeletonizing, the pocket clip has to come and it touches right along the G10 on the outside part of the circle right here. So right where that fold is, that's where it touches, uh, which is a whole lot better than if it sort of came in like at the middle of the hole or something, then the pocket clip would just be terrible. This pocket clip isn't perfect, but it's a decent pocket clip. It's It doesn't work good for light fabrics. Like if you're wearing, um, you know, light fabric shorts in the summertime, this thing doesn't tend to like that. It it's a, takes a bit of force to get it to go into your pocket. Um, the spring tension's good. It's not overly strong, but it's because it's focused at one point and then there's air behind it so that the fabric kind of gets pinched harder than it would if it's just a flat G10 surface with a pocket clip resting on it. Here's uh, my stand-in jeans. The lip of the uh, end of the pocket clip is good enough that it fits over. And now try to hear this pop sound. Did you hear it? You went pop. Oop, that time uh, the, I hit the wood that's underneath this pair of jeans. So that's, let's see if we can make that pop sound again. See, it pops. And that's because it's lifting over that. And then the denim gets released with that airspace behind it. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, because it follows the angle on the wants to sit this way. So then the knife is not sitting along the seam of the pocket. It's coming in towards the pocket. If you make it sit along that seam, then you've got the uh, back end of the knife sticking out a little bit. That's not a problem. It does put a little bit more pressure on your pocket just at that one spot than it does when it's sitting this way. If that's a big deal to you, hey, choose another knife. Uh, it's it is something to consider. Uh, the G10 is milled out, and so the pocket clip sits in the G10, and uh, so you only need that one screw to hold it, and the other sides are being held in place. So plenty enough screws on here. You know, you get the two screws going through the uh, backspacer coming together, and then the pivot pin to keep this knife together. The balance point is right there. Easy to clean, not so much. Because you've got all these holes going all the way through, it can be a little bit, you know, you can't just sweep it out with uh, a cotton swab. You've got to go into this section and clean it out as well. Uh, not that it collects a lot of dirt, but it is a little bit more challenging to clean out than some knives. But that's part and parcel with the design. There's uh, some jipping here on the spine of the blade, but it's not so aggressive that it bothers your thumb. If anything, it might be a little bit too smooth, um, but it's not a big deal. I like how it is. Let's take a look at it. Take it apart now. It's well built. It's assembled well. It's smoothly polished. It's got a good look, and it's not a big, heavy knife. Let's go over all of the specs and that kind of information. Wow, this uh, tiny little Stanley Fat Max sits here. Well, it's not that tiny, is it? But it's a small one. 118 grams, 4.15 ounces for this knife. That's not super light, but it's certainly not a heavy knife. They made it very sharp. 65 on the best scale. 65, not 165. Anything under 200 is considered sharp. I couldn't believe it when I got, you know, a score of 65. And so I usually test it three times. Um, I, I tested it five times and the average came out to be you know, between 65 and 70, I usually round to the nearest five. So we'll say 65 for how sharp this edge is from the factory. So whoever was sharpening this Best Tech knife, oh, Best Tech, you've got some good staff in there. You know, not perfect, of course, as we mentioned about the tip, but very good. Uh, measurements now, the length of the cutting edge, 8.7 centimeters, 3.425 inches. The blade length, so tip to the... The handle right there, the, the steel liner, it's a little bit less, 8.6 centimeters instead of 8.7. That's 3.386 of an inch. 
So it's a full size knife. It's basically just under three and a half inches long in the blade. The uh, blade thickness back here, 3.18 millimeters, which is 0.125 of an inch. So an eighth of an inch exactly. Blade depth, this measurement here, about an inch up from the sharpness choil, 2.43 centimeters. That's 0.957 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, well, that is 0.47 millimeters, which is uh, 18 and a half thousandths of an inch thick. Very well done. So every time you sharpen it, it's going to get a little thicker behind the grind. So it's going to take a number of sharpenings before it gets down to uh, 20 thousandths. You know, and so that's good. I like that. Whoever ground this knife knew how to make a very sharp edge, but they're not quite sure how to grind. 13.7 uh, degrees on this side, sort of on average at the middle where you cut the most. And then it changes at the tip to a whole lot steeper than that. And on this side, it's 22.4 degrees. And again, that's right about where you cut the most and then it gets steeper here and shallower here. Um, I think in another part of the video, I said the grinding was done quite well. Yes, it's very sharp, but it's not ground well. Uh, when I go to sharpen this knife, D2 steel, I'll probably sharpen it to about uh, 19, 20 degrees per side, maybe 18. But, you know, it's going to have to remove a fair bit of steel. So thankfully, it's so thin behind the grind, like I said, but it's going to get a little thicker behind the grind by the time I get it evened out on both sides. So sharp, yeah, it's sharp out of the box. But as we so often see on budget knives, the grind itself is not something you want to match. You don't want to match 13, well, let's say 14 degrees on one side and 22 degrees on the other side. That's not something you want to match. And especially with a varying. So sharp, but not ground super well. On to the handle length. The handle length is 11.64 centimeters. That's 4.582 of an inch. So four and a half inches. The grip area, uh, it's a little less than 10 centimeters, a little less than four inches. I thought it would be less until I went and measured it. The handle thickness is 1.317 centimeters, which is 0.518 of an inch. So half an inch thick, very good for this knife. The handle depth, uh, that's the biggest spot right there, but I usually don't measure there. So here, the handle depth, 2.48 centimeters, 0.977 of an inch. So just under one inch. When the knife is closed, this is actually bigger here than this is. So it's right here, 2.778 centimeters, which is 1.094 inches. And the length of the blade is 20.29 centimeters. Oh, I forgot to convert that to inches. So let's take a look at this. Uh, this visually is not always the most accurate way to go, but it's just, it's just under eight inches right there. Just barely. Uh, from the tip all the way to the end. So it's a, it's not a small knife, but it looks small and it feels small in the hand uh, without feeling too small, if you know what I mean. Very functional. It's a good size and it's nice and light, you know, 4.15 ounces. Very well done. How much does this knife cost? Well, this is one of Best Tech's budget knives and their lowest price that they sell their knives at is $52 and uh, the US dollars. And they've got standard prices that they make all their resellers agree to so that they don't sell it for less. But if you get yours from White Mountain Knives, you can save 10% on everything you buy at that store. So that means this would be $46.80 instead of 52. So that's not bad. I did find it on Amazon, you know, for the same price. So I'll have links down below for Amazon as well. But of course, White Mountain Knives is where I would suggest you buy from because you save your 10%. And because White Mountain Knives is good to me. Uh, I saw it on Amazon.ca, but it ships from the United States. So if you're going to buy this uh, from the United States anyways, you might as well buy it from White Mountain Knives. I'm talking to Canadians and, and other people. Uh, I found other stores that have this knife in stock. It's not all over the place, but it's in several places. Uh, knivesandtools.com and, of course, their sister, knivesandtools.co.uk, have this. 65 euros or 58 British pounds. So what do you think of this knife? 
I quite like it. I've enjoyed carrying it. Um, it's comfortable, light, feels feels good in the hand. Uh, it's got a nice look to it. Uh, you've got the option to get that uh, anodized, not anodized, the titanium coating. It's a dark gray titanium coating. Or you can get this satin with stone wash. Uh, all four of these knives are available at White Mountain Knives as of today, uh, September 13th, when I'm recording this. It's a good knife. I really like the look of this. Um, the blade shape is what really, really clinches it for me. Uh, with this high saber grind, it slices wonderfully. The tip, it makes it perform very well. It's a good looking, good feeling knife. Oh, my dog wants supper. You'll just have to wait, Bandit. Just wait. Um, I was going to mention something else now. What was I going to say about this knife? I was, my little doggy distracted me, which is not that hard for him to do. So what do you think from what you see? you have any questions, comments, please leave your comments down below. The comments really do help keep this uh, channel going. Thank you to everybody who likes, shares, subscribes. You guys are great. Uh, <laughs> he really wants my attention. Yes, I'll play with you in a minute, Bandit. But first, I have to tell my friends to remember, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.